up, everybody? Welcome back to the Price to Sell podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Campoli. And today, it's a little different. I'm at a table, not at the couch. <laughs> We're going to switch it up today a little bit. But I'm, I'm uh, grateful to be in the presence of two people who traveled from Ottawa to be here. I shut my phone off. Uh, we have an amazing realtor. I actually discovered him through social media. Uh, also crushing it in social thank media you, game. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> and then his partner, Mallory, who also crushes social media. Thank and you. I'm not going to take a couple tips from you. Thanks. I'm sure a lot of people are going to today as well. So we have so. Josh Reyes, Mallory Rowan. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're excited welcome. to the city. You're here a lot, though. Yes. We yeah. like to do short bursts that are too short and then jam everything yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, right? We don't, we don't like to learn our lesson. <laughs> I'm the exact same way. Yeah. 31 years so, of that. Yeah, it works. It, it, it does work. Yeah. It does work. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for coming. If you want to, like, Josh, we'll start with you. A quick... Uh, quick bio into who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Born and raised in Ottawa, got into real estate in 2019. Uh, before that, we had an e-commerce company. So That's that cool. was our intro to entrepreneurship. So students, power lifters, uh, scaled it to our full-time job, uh, traveled North America, lifted with some pretty strong do? athletes. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Done it all, eh? oh, yeah. Yeah. We really started cool. dating at the same time as starting the business, That's which great. was like a horrible idea. But We're going to talk about these fine. dynamics. Yeah. We're gonna talk <laughs> you you got to drop your numbers. What we, what's your... Your, My your squat bench and deadlift. Oh, oh pretty gosh. impressive. My squat was maybe like 330, deadlift like 350, and bench like 170. Oh, good for you. Thank you. Solid. Legit. Yeah. Mm-hmm, My little bad. brother's listening. He's going to. Yeah, curl in a ball right now. Going for my numbers. <laughs> no, he's not. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Christian. You're the best. Um, yeah, that's really cool. So you guys instantly had that dynamic. Yeah, we actually haven't dated without business. a business. I guess that's okay too. <laughs> Yeah. To start, yeah, <laughs> you're like you know, yeah. you kind of have like no expectation, nothing to compare. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, we'll get into that dynamic. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting, and a lot of people in the industry and whoever's listening, like entrepreneur, real real estate, whatever you're in, I have that dynamic. Mm-hmm. So a lot to talk about there. But I love to jump, and Mallory, let's let's hear about you. A little background. Yeah. So like Josh said, I was always really into marketing. Um, <clears> like in high school, I planned my my prom. I did the grad wear, all that kind of stuff. And then in university, I took journalism and business. And so it was kind of nice to start playing in like all the different skill sets. I got to network a lot. And then like Josh said, we ended up starting our first business there. Um, And before that, I was kind of corporate and startup world, liked a bit of both sides, but didn't really think I would work for myself, thought I would just be like, you know, an executive somewhere. And just, I feel like we kind of fell into it. It was getting traction. Like he said, we quit our jobs. And then uh, I got super burnt out doing it between the powerlifting. I was still working full time and in school and then doing our business. Um, So that kind of forced me to take a step back. And that's why now I focus so much on like helping other entrepreneurs build without the burnout, because Mm -hmm. it really did teach me so much of like, what, what was the good stuff to take? What stuff like wasn't the best idea? Um, and just really approaching with like a lifestyle approach instead. Yeah, it's cool. And mm-hmm. your numbers are huge on Instagram. Like you're walking the walk, you know? Yeah, thank you. Which, I mean, there's a lot of people out there like, oh yeah, I can help you grow your socials. Right. And it's all fake. And, you <laughs> right. know? Yeah, 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 yeah. They've like bought their followers. Or, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, like, it's good to see authenticity. I preach yeah. it all the time. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's dive right into the social media. Like, Obviously, a lot of my listeners are, are realtors, some mm-hmm. aren't, so we can speak generally here. Yeah. But yeah, just growing a good presence and audience, like what are some of the, the secrets? Yeah, I would definitely say like community is number one. Mm-hmm. Um, deciding exactly who you want to serve and then like really being involved in the community. So even with our first business, with the product base, like being powerlifters ourselves and like going to the events, it, it's really nice to pair social with other strategies, whether it's email marketing or events or podcasts, um, really building that bigger community. Cause like you said, people can tell when it's not authentic. So I'd say that's like the biggest piece and then building that trust, that relationship, you know, we hadn't met you in person until today, but I feel like we both, already know the vibe, you yeah. know, because mm-hmm. you can tell from how people show up online. Um, so a lot of that comes through like providing value, whether that's educating, whether that's giving relatable information, that's a big thing, especially for realtors. And Josh can speak to this, like his business has been almost a hundred percent social media leads. Yeah. And like the quality we get from it is insane because the trust is built in. Like we can find buyers homes faster than I see with other people because the trust is there from the start that you're not doing all, you know, when realtors are like, Oh, I got to do this offer with my client. We're not going to get it. 
I just have to do it to like build the trust, right? Because they have all these hesitancies. I think they, there's just so much trust already built that if Josh says, you want this house this is what we have to do, they're like, yeah. I'm in. I've noticed that too. Mm -hmm. uh, like, let's dig into this because it's a big problem that Definitely. a lot of us realtors face. And I've, I've faced this in the past. It's yeah. like, you can take all clients for a year mm -hmm. and they're always fighting you. Yeah. You're on their side. Exactly. You work for them. Yeah. We work, it's a team thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, no, Matt, I don't want to pay that. I don't want to pay this. It's like, okay, but I'm the expert. Yes. Pay this. And then we lose out on offer night. It's like, oh my God, I hate these things. Why are we losing? It's because you're not listening, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. it's not coachable. But not coachable, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll dig into that too because I've noticed, um, especially like, the past couple of years with my social media growing, a lot of mm -hmm. people are just like taking what I say at face value and they're yep. like, and it, things are so smooth, mm -hmm. right? And they're, and they're happy. I'm happy. Everything works out. It's like yeah. the perfect dance. Yeah. So let's dig into that. Yeah, definitely. I think like one of like our key pillars is just education, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of the times when people reach out, they're like, hey, I've been following you for a few years, a few months. You've taught me X, Y, Z. I'm now ready to buy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of what mom mentioned, like the value add. I think one of our big philosophies for Instagram and real estate was when I was looking at other realtors, when I got into the game, I'm like, everyone's posting like sold this, sold that, you know, like it's just like a portfolio of what they've done, which is great. And you still need that. But at the end of the day, I'm like, if I'm not actively looking for a home or to sell my home, why would I follow this person? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we, we were always like, okay, how can we create a page in a community where regardless if you're buying or not, you want to follow, you yeah. know, like <clears throat> provide value in whatever that may be. Yeah, and you mentioned, I think this ties into something you mentioned earlier about real estate agents being realtors versus business people. Yes. I love that, so let's mm -hmm. talk about it. Yeah, well, you know, we come from the business background first, and I think so many people get into real estate because they're good at selling or they're really into the real estate side, and so they don't have those same business foundations, but they also just are kind of mirroring what we saw a lot of the traditional realtors do, right? do real estate until they retire. And I think a lot of the younger generation also don't necessarily want that route, but we see they either build to the point of burnout or to the point of quitting or just like getting where they think they wanna go and being like, oh man, like I didn't have a plan once I got here, I don't really wanna be here. Um, so I think approaching it as a business, you know, saying what is my marketing strategy, right? Like, am I building an email list? Um, am I posting just to post? Because at that point, you might as well be off Instagram, right? Like, am I actually thinking about what content is here to build community? What content is here to actually convert? Um, and then that's where you see the, the big difference. Like, Josh has had multiple times where, you know, somebody reaches out on a Sunday, they see a house Tuesday, and by Wednesday, They've got the offer accepted because of that build of they understand the market, they understand how the offers work and like the relationship is there. So I think that's really important. And I think that really is putting on the business hat and not just saying the classic like I sold a house, I sold a house, here's the house I sold. I think the number one question is asking yourself like why would people follow me as a realtor all year round? Yeah, yeah, it's super important. And I, mm -hmm. I can speak on that too when I first got into it. I deleted all my personal pictures <laughs> and then it's like bang posted the standard like yeah, yeah. Know, like dead into the camera <laughs> yeah, no smile it's like <laughs> yeah. why in the hell would you use me though yeah <laughs> right mm -hmm. i never understood that mm -hmm. never understood it so then i started to get a lot more personal and then i did that early thankfully but mm -hmm. i'm a big yeah. i always looked at myself as like i'm not matt campoli the realtor i'm matthew campoli yeah. i just happened to sell real estate Exactly. Yeah, and isn't it such a more enjoyable experience to go look yeah. at houses with someone that feels like a friend exactly. that will give that honest opinion, but you can also talk about the game last night, right? It doesn't yeah. always have to be like our parents' old distant family friend yeah. that we feel stuck with, right? Sure. I think it helps people. There's a realtor for everyone. We always say like you could lose out just because someone has Star Wars in common with a client, mm -hmm. and that's something you can't beat. And social gives you that space, especially for new realtors. You don't have the 30 years of experience to tout about, right? So being like, okay, well, this is who I am as a person, someone can go, well, I relate to that and that's who I want on my side. Yeah. And and to this date, like my, for the longest time, my, my biggest client reached out to me on Instagram because we had the same dog. Yeah. They're like, hey, we have very similar <laughs> dogs. I'm looking to relocate to Ottawa from Toronto. I want you as my agent. I'm like, sweet. We hopped on a call, connected again with our dogs, had other similar interests and they were amazing. When you say biggest, like got like a decent sized deal? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It was nice. my biggest deal. And then I, I beat it in the fall. But nice. yeah, for the longest time, it was my biggest deal. Awesome. And did the dogs come to the showing? Uh, <laughs> no. We close. It was, it was more okay. COVID, but and then they're relocating. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, definitely put in the clause, 
dog needs to visit first before awesome yeah, yeah. Least, very standard yeah. yeah okay love that i think that's a side two people forget about is they go well i have a local business uh-huh. like i'm only going to do so much on instagram right um but the global access is crazy right whether it's getting referrals from other realtors like josh will get a lot of people reaching out to him saying i have a client because there's something to look up right if you just said like josh reyes and he's not online it's like a standard website that just has listings you're not really sure who you're getting whereas if someone refers him they can actually reach out realtors can find him and we've had a lot of that where people are relocating to ottawa or you know through our powerlifting community we built too you know someone from brampton will know a friend that's moving to ottawa and say i have a realtor for you yeah so you really can leverage a much wider community yep and that's the beautiful thing about social right like Mm -hmm. like she said if you have trust from whatever industry or business you were prior mm-hmm. once you have that trust with someone it doesn't it almost doesn't matter what you're like selling or what you're yeah. getting into next they'll refer you oh hello there my fellow real estate enthusiasts today's episode is brought to you by the one and only warrior <laughs> law the law firm that's the best in the biz when it comes to closing deals these guys are not your grandmother's law firm they complete same day status certificates and purchase agreement reviews so you can put in your offers without care in the world plus they're digital so you can have virtual closings across ontario Talk about fancy. And get this, they're available seven days a week. That's right, no rest for the wicked. They even speak over eight languages. So there's no excuse for any lost in translation drama. Warrior Law works hand in hand with real estate agents and mortgage brokers. So you know they're the real deal. They'll make sure your transactions are smooth and work around the schedule to get those closing docs when you need them. So if you're looking for a law firm that's not only exceptional, but also makes closing deals look like a piece of cake, Warrior Law is your go-to. Check out the description and the episode to learn more. A million percent. I just I just got a, a really good referral from Nova Scotia for a listing. Yeah. And I, the agent, we don't know each other. Just trust me off social. Mm-hmm. I have, um, and two really recent examples of. So I'm really seeing this take 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 shape, right? And it's cool because you don't realize that this is the reason and the power of it. But mm-hmm. even like a listing, I just had two two buyers that came through Realtor.ca. Um, Picked up both. The first guy's like, yeah, I saw your profile. You look like you know what you're talking about. I trust it. Cool, man. I, I just said hello to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Second guy's like, yeah, I got a good vibe. I saw your website. I saw your profile. Looks good. He's like, yeah. usually realtors. I'm like, I'm like, I don't like realtors. He's mm-hmm. like, but you? He's like, I like you. I'm like, cool. Like, I just, just yeah. picked up the phone, you know? Exactly. So let's talk about community building because mm-hmm. it's good and all. Like, everything we're talking about is great. But I feel like a lot of people just don't know where to start mm-hmm. um, or how they can. Like, if you're coaching a client right now, for example, it's like, what kind of what kind of exercises do you take them through to realize what type of community they should build or the direction they should go? Yeah, I think um, looking, I always say like, if your brand and your customer went on a date on a Friday night, like where are they going? What are they talking about, right? You're not just talking about real estate the whole time. And I think people get so focused on like, oh, I must talk about the stats and yes, that. It's yes. like, are you having craft beers? Are you talking about the local businesses, right? What are those common shared interests? That will really help you narrow in on the type of person you like to work with, especially depending on your city. Like Ottawa is still small enough traffic wise where you don't necessarily have to pick an area. You can pick a type of person. For us, that's very much been what we do, right? So understanding that customer inside out is where you're really going to form like those deeper connections and then deciding how you best show up. Because I think sometimes we see these accounts that are very education focused. So people think that's how I have to show up, but you might be someone like cash, right? Cash is very like entertaining on social <laughs> and that's, guy. yeah, that's Shout what works cash. for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like, I think just being able to let go a little bit get out of the following all the other realtors and seeing what they're doing and look at other parts of social and see what are the accounts you love following. You know, you referenced my account. It's like, I'm not in the real estate space, but someone could look at what I'm doing and go, I'm going to do the real estate version of that. Right. Um, So I think that's really important. Finding your style and not, you know, try things that get you uncomfortable, but not that feel really unaligned. Yeah. And then really get clear on who you're serving because that can differentiate you, whether you're one month into the business or 10 years into the business. Yeah. And I could just imagine your conversations at home <laughs> <laughs> on, your, on your spare time. You know, it's yeah. like, I love it. It's like me, me and my girlfriend too, same way. Yeah. But I love to unpack um, some like Instagram is always changing. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're on top of the algorithm and things like that too. So it's mm-hmm. like we are, today is April 28th. Okay. What are some things that people should be doing on the socials, maybe the stuff that's been working as of late. Like it's always changing. It's a changing landscape all the time. So what are some things like 
today that people should be doing? Is it yeah. pictures again? Stories. Is it still reels? Stories. Stories. Ooh. Okay. Like last summer, <clears throat> we were renovating a cottage. So Josh was busier with that. He posted stories almost every day, though. He maybe posted in feed like seven times over three yeah. months, yeah. which is definitely not a lot. It was like the easiest way for me to stay consistent. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah for sure. And it is very easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's true. And he still got the same leads. We would run into people. They knew exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm, they were still mm-hmm. seeing everything. If you know, if we surveyed an audience, I think they would say, oh, Josh posts once a week on feed, right? Because they felt so intimately involved. Stories is huge. It's also a more, um, like a warmer space. I think it's more natural to reply to a story. And then all of a sudden you're having a one-to-one conversation. Very true. I think comment culture has changed a lot. Mm-hmm. Like we comment on these viral things. I don't think people comment the same way. So people post to feed and it can just kind of feel like naked and afraid, you know, yes. like no one's there reciprocating. Mm-hmm. So we say there's kind of like heat zones. And so feeds like a lot colder than people think. Yeah. And then stories is really a warm spot. And then that gets you into the DMs. Uh, we do a lot of using features like the um, polls. The polls. Mm-hmm. Are you buying this year? Instead of yes, no, do yep or two to three years for me. Great. Put all of those people in your CRM. You don't need their email to be in CRM, right? You can use their usernames. Um, now you have a whole lead list of people who said they're buying next year or they're up for. It's true about the usernames. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we started doing that this year. She actually mentioned it uh, earlier. Cause I'm like, oh, there's a person who just reached out recently on my stories and I was looking at our, our messages and I'm like, oh, she messaged me in 2020 about real estate mm-hmm. and now she's messaging me again, but I mm. forgot about that person. Yes. Yes. Right. But true. then she's like, yeah, you should just write that person down. Yeah. Right. So we've been, we've been doing that and it's been, it's been good. Yeah. Adjusting your systems. And then yeah. I think like, um, original content is the other big one. I think like trends can come and go and yeah. they can serve their purpose. But I think when you lean too hard in the trends, everyone's doing the same thing and then people are so numb to it Mm -hmm. um so just looking at like okay what's a skill set i have and how do i bring that to the table an example being a lot of my content lately is b-roll which Mm -hmm. is like extra footage of someone doing something like typing drinking whatever um i have so much footage of my life because we've been (laughs) online for so long right yeah so some people will see my content and i'll do a voiceover with that and it's a minute i can edit that in like less than 30 minutes. Like that could be eight hours for someone else. Yes, me. And, yes. <laughs> yeah, and that's me. I don't have to film anything. Like yeah. I might film like half of a second of a clip because uh-huh. I have it all. But people don't see that. They just go, that's working. So I'm going to do it. And now they're spending 16 hours making a voiceover edit. They don't know how to do a voiceover. Like that's my journalism school background kicking in, right? Yeah. So I think that's where you have to look at your strengths, but figure out what's in a way, a way to do original content that will... F- feel different. We're seeing a lot of the high produced with the yellow captions coming on screen, which I think worked really well for a moment, but then it's like everyone took it. So you kind of have to pay attention to those things. Yeah. 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 And it it can work, right? Mm -hmm. Certain industries, it's still working. Certain industries, it gets oversaturated and you just have to pay attention to that and say, okay, what am I going to do? And that's how you'll stand out differently too. For sure. What do you think about photos? Still photos. Carousels. Carousels. Crushing yes. It? Yeah. Like I would say never do just a static, static post being like a single photo. Mm-hmm. Every photo can be a carousel. Yes. And there's so many different opportunities with that, whether it's multiple photos of your personal trip, right? Mm-hmm. It's a great way to get more personal and like jam pack it of you could have you and your girlfriend, you snowboarding, your dog yeah. all in one. Uh-huh. Definitely. Um, or I love doing like, I always think about what people will save, save mm. or share. Yeah, save or like send to a friend or share in stories. Um, Those are huge metrics right now. Like some of my videos have like 140,000 saves. Wow. And that's what keeps them going to the like 2 million plus. Mm -hmm. Um, But thinking about your content that way, I think people go like, oh, how will this look and feed? And it's like, is this a piece of content that I would either share with somebody or save? That will drastically change it. Like, we do the same thing with Sayer. We might have a post we want to do. Let's say Josh was speaking at the Remax conference. We could do one photo that says Josh speaking. Instead, we turn it into a carousel and we put some of his stats of why somebody might even want to hire him. It's like, hey, this is why he's speaking at this thing, right? Mm. Here's his stats. It's always an opportunity to like one up it. 
Definitely. It's also kind of like YouTube view time, right? So yes. I'm sure Instagram has some sort of algorithm with how long you stay on a post. Yeah. So if it's just one photo, you could quickly swipe through, right? Definitely. But if you have 10 photos mm-hmm. and someone is swiping through all 10 yeah. photos, they'll stay on that post longer. I'm sure Instagram likes that, so they'll push your content yeah, more. It's, it's remembering Instagram is a business yes. and they want people to stay on the platform. Mm-hmm. So that's a huge part of carousels is you are keeping that person on the platform longer. Yeah, this is all amazing tips yeah I, one that stood out that you did was uh you're on the treadmill yes oh my god it was just repeat you, the, it was like it's just a b-roll of a treadmill b-roll so of a treadmill. you had a lot of information people had to read it yeah so it's like it a three second video and repeated it just repeated is. repeated so there's a funny story behind that okay backstory um i wanted to get back <laughs> into like fitness training so i wanted to like record my things and i told mal i'm like hey let's go in the morning there's nobody working out i want you to get like a video of me running on a treadmill she gets the video and it was done and i'm like there's no one here. Do you want one? Do you want a video too? She's like, ah, I guess why not? She got a quick uh, video. I guess why not? <laughs> yeah, right? I guess why not? She got that. a quick video, and then I don't know. A couple of days later, she, she's like, oh, I could use it as a B-roll for whatever this yeah. my content was, and that blew up. Like that really helped her, like mm-hmm. like skyrocket where your followers are now. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's one video away. Like it just kind of happened, you know. Like you never. Yeah, know. and you just have to play with those styles. Like I actually don't generally lean towards like the shorter videos. I just find like for me they don't work as well. But then the ones that hit, they hit yeah. hard. You <laughs> hard, know? yeah. So it's like to make a three second video and risk it. And I think enough people don't play. They're just always worried about like how is this going to perform or if it doesn't do well. They're like, I'm never making a video again. I'm like, if it doesn't do well, I'm like, cool. What was it specifically about this? Okay, I'm going to tweak one thing and I'm going to try it again. You know, it might be the timing of the words on screen. It might need to be a little longer. And I think letting your content stay and see how it does. I had one, this is a concept someone can steal too, short video. It says like reasons why your motivation is low. And then it's all in the caption. So same thing. It's like you have to read the caption. So people are there for like 10 minutes reading this really in-depth thing, even though the video barely said anything. Mm -hmm. At first, I I saw the idea of putting more in the caption elsewhere. I tried it. It did okay. And then after it started picking up and then it kept picking up. So if I had deleted it being like, oh, this was a bad idea, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got that information. That's a key thing to point out because a lot of people will look at the 24 hours. Yeah. I should be like, shit, how am I only at like... 2,000 views, yeah. and then like I just had a video uh, with Price to Sell because I do those field trips, mm-hmm. and uh, got like 4K, whatever, which yeah. is pretty like low. On, I looked, I'm like, ah, oh, whatever, it didn't perform. A day later, 21,000, yeah, and 23, mm-hmm. right? So it's like that's a big difference for pick. Instagram this year too. I, they've definitely changed something that it's more like TikTok. Yes, TikTok was has always been that way. They that did old change ones something. Pop, pop. Yeah. That's what's helped a lot this year is like making those good quality videos, believing in them, leaving mm-hmm. them up, and yeah. they will like get picked up. Yeah, I think that's clutch for people to listen to mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in the, the final moments of our pod. I'd love to just get into the, the dynamics with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> as, you know, being someone in a similar dynamic and, yeah. you know, people listening. It's always a question like mixing business with pleasure, right? Things mm-hmm. like that. How is the dynamic working together plus dating each other? I mean, it's super convenient. <laughs> it is, say, right? You know, because yeah. you can be like driving in the car and you can either be talking about your weekend plans or you yeah. can be talking about like the business thing. I think like for us, it's been less about which hat to wear of personal versus professional and more like making sure our roles are clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was a big one. Like early on with our first business, I remember um, probably my, my fault, but like we were like double emailing someone because mm-hmm. we didn't know our clear roles yes and then it just looks unprofessional because yep, if someone sure. reaches out to the business and we're both emailing mm-hmm. so then i think after that point we kind of figured out what our roles were and that like helped a lot more and it lets you lean into your strengths for sure too of knowing like okay you're gonna be you know the higher power or higher voice on this thing and i'm gonna be it on this thing and we can pull each other in but it's like if we're gonna take a risk like for me it's like i'd be the marketing one and he's often like the numbers thing it's like I might have an idea and then he's going to run with it and he might have an idea and then I'm going to turn it into something bigger, right? So I think really having those clear roles helps. And then the same thing at home of like, okay, these are the, like Josh cooks most of our food, right? Because it's just kind of the dynamic we have of like, it's easy for him, he'll do it, I'm working. And then I do like other stuff Mm -hmm. too. Um, So I think the clear roles has been helpful for Mm -hmm. us. Do you find sometimes you don't shut off from work? Yes. 
I think like sometimes like after a long, after she's had a long day and let's say I'm really excited about a business idea or something, I'll, I'll, me I'll, I'll go like yes. talk to her and she's like, I love you, but like, yeah. I just can't talk business right now. Yeah, I just like, need to like decompress. And yeah. I'm like, I get it. But I'm like, I just want to like yeah, tell yeah, her, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Ready yet? You ready? Yeah. We started saying like talk shop. Yeah. It's like the code for like, shop. can I, can I go there? Especially when it's in a setting, like if we're at our family cottage, like there was one time we were out in a canoe. It's like, so not the place, but then we were both feeling really like inspired by the environment. So we were yeah. like, do we go there? Yeah. And that helps. And I think there's different um, work styles too. Like certain things I can have the creative conversation and then others I'm like, no, I need like a notebook. I need the numbers in front of me because it's stressing me out that you're bringing it up. Mm -hmm. So I think finding that balance of like what things can you talk about at any hour versus what things need to be like in work mode. Yeah. And do you, do you guys um, like set certain set like time block for each other, like things like that? To like, okay, here, here, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. and on, mm. no work. Do you do stuff like that or kind of like go with the flow? No, and Not directly. I know okay. like with her transition, she liked like, not, like more so like no work on weekends. Mm -hmm. Right, It's harder yeah. as a realtor. Yes. Um, like, but I think that helped you with your balance a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't do evenings or weekends unless I'm like really passionately dry, like diving into something. Like okay. if I was working on my website and just like enjoying doing that on a Monday night. So that does help of like the work talk is generally done at a certain time. Um, and then other than that, I think it's just like us both. I'd say we plan our days, but not necessarily of like, when are we talking work versus not like, I love to have a day that's like my calls. I love to have a day that's my meeting for coffees because I'm not that productive in between either of those things. So it's like, we kind of assign days that way. Yeah. Um, and the real estate obviously adds a different twist because sometimes he might not be home all day and then he's home in the evening and we wanted to tackle something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the opposite. So we're pretty go with the flow with it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Marina and I do something similar. It's like Mondays is like, we're both home. Yeah. Pure catch up day. She's on her yes. computer. I'm on mine. Mondays Just are like so good for that. Dialed in. And I can look forward to them because mm -hmm. other than that, if I don't time block, then yeah. Like it's a disaster, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. Not, I say yes to everything. I know. I'm, I'm such right? a people pleaser. It's yeah, like, me too. Bah. It's it's. I mean, the pros and cons to it definitely. But mm -hmm. in our industry, it's like, oh, you're not available like until Friday. Like I'm yeah. gonna go use someone else. You know, it's exactly. like yeah. or 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 is that a thought process that we have with ourselves? Yeah. 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 Right. So it's it's a uh, interesting thing to navigate, mm -hmm. but um, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely it. an industry you know? that rewards people pleasing. I yeah. will say that. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> it, does. It, does. So. it encourages you guys in the worst way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as we end off here, guys, I want to thank you guys for coming to Toronto. Yeah. You know, gracing us with your presence here. <laughs> a lot of value. A lot of people are going to love it. Good. Um, if you want to leave the audience with like one more piece of knowledge, the floor is mm. yours. Yeah. I would just say start, like start yesterday. If you post every week for a year. That's like 52 data points that you wouldn't have if you just waited a year. And I'm really big on that of you're mm. not going to know what's working or not if you just sit there and tell yourself what you think is going to work or not. Yeah. And sometimes the lowest performing content will be where you land the million dollar client. So don't judge those superficial metrics. Like really try things that you believe in and give it a full shot. And I'll change it up a little bit. I'm getting into some like Ironman training. So cool. I'm like looking like I'm, get, I'm getting to like running, biking, swimming. Nice, um, but, but one thing that I think uh, correlates from running to like business is go slow to go far. Like mm -hmm. I think 2021 was a, like a go, go, go year for me. And I feel like last year I was a little bit burnt out. And I think that like realtors especially, like mm -hmm. there's a hard hustle culture. Um, and a lot of people like promote that and you think like to be successful, you have to hustle hard. And I, I think like it's it's not great, you know, like people just need to like slow down, um, be sustainable pretty much. Yeah. 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 I love it. I resonate with both answers. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming. Uh, let's plug in your everything right now. Start with yeah, Mallory. Yeah, I'm at Mallory Rowan on everything. So Instagram, TikTok, my website is MalloryRowan.com. I do have a program available for any type of personal brands, including realtors, um, that teaches the social strategy. Um, and then our team account is Sayer Group. And then my social is it's Josh with two H's, um, Reyes. Uh, everywhere. Uh, and if Josh Reyes wants to sell me his account, <laughs> yeah. I will buy it. But <laughs> I'm I'm stuck with the two H's right now. Josh, man, <laughs> figure it out. Is he even active? He's probably not even active. No, no. I they hate never those are. guys. They never are. Never. Come on, Josh, man. <laughs> Please. You're not even the real Josh Reyes. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, anyways, to everyone out there, thank you for always tuning in. 
please don't forget to leave us a five star review or else I'll find out where you live and share with your it's friends, family. Because you can. The MLS. I know. I, will, I have. <laughs> ge- it's a real <laughs> Geo Warehouse. I will Geo Warehouse your address yeah. and I will find out where you live. Yeah. And the rest, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. So just leave a five star review, like, subscribe, share. I'm getting angry, but I love you. See you on the next one. Bye.